Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dotton.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Lineage OS 22 ROM based on Android 15 onto a Galaxy A52 S 5G. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, make sure that you are on the latest One UI 6 firmware. If that's well and good, then get hold of the latest Android SDK platform tool for my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may do so anywhere you want. In my case, I've done that in C drive and these are the files of platform tools. Once you've done the extraction, Okay, this is not the file. Let me remove this from here. And these are the files of platform tools. Once you have done the extraction, you will now have to unlock the bootloader as well. Do know that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it will trip the NOX as well. And NOX is the hardware component in the motherboard. Once it gets tripped, there is no going back. So the drawbacks such as the Samsung Pay and the secure folder not working will stay there forever even if you relock the bootloader. So if that's all well and good, then simply enable OEM unlocking and USB debugging on your phone. And after that, you will have to boot your phone to the download mode. Then long press the volume up key to enter the down device unlock mode. And once again, press the volume up key. And with this, the bootloader will be unlocked on your phone. Once that is done, you will also have to verify the bootloader status. So in that case, you will have to go online and make sure that the OEM unlocking is enabled. Okay, so this would not have been in my phone as well. Let me show you once what I mean. Let me first enable developer option from the about phone software information build number section. And now let me show, show you what I mean. I have already unlocked the bootloader, but even if I go to developer option, you could see that the OEM unlocking is missing. So what I have to do now is I have to connect my phone to the Wi-Fi and type in the password, which will take just a few seconds. And then the OEM unlocking toggle should be enabled and gray out as well. So just give me a second. And the Wi-Fi is now typed and connected to the Wi-Fi. So now let me show you the o Now you have to go back and close the developer options from the swipe recent menu. Then once again, go to the settings menu and now go to developer option. And now you'll be able to see the OEM unlocking toggle. Let me show you. So as you could see, it's now enabled and gray out. So now your task is complete. Likewise, also enable USB debugging and tap on OK. If you get a prompt again, tap on allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So open the CMD window in the platform tools folder. So you may copy the path of platform tools, then open CMD from here and type in CD space, paste the path of platform tools, hit enter. And you are now inside the platform tools directory. Now type in ADB devices and verify that you are getting an ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB fixes and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action, let's move ahead, is to get hold of the Odin tool. This tool will be required to flash the recovery file onto your phone. So get hold of the tool and extract them onto your PC. The files will be as follows. Just let me show you. Flash tool Odin. So you will get the following four files as could be seen here. Moving on. You will now have to get hold of the ROM recovery and the VBMeta file. So download all the three files. This is the ROM file, the recovery and the VBMeta. Download the three files and transfer all the three files inside the platform tools directory. This is the recovery and VBMeta. Let's rename it to simply VBMeta and recovery for the ease of convenience. Likewise, let's rename it to recovery as well. Then transfer the ROM zip file inside the platform tools directory as well. And again, let's rename it to something shorter. So let's rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. Once that is done, you will now have to convert the IMG file to the tar file because you might be aware that Samsung does not support fastboot mode and it also does not support flashing in the IMG file. You could only flash the tar files or the zip files. So we will have to convert the IMG to the tar format. So for that, you have to simply copy paste both of these commands. First is the recovery command. So copy this command and paste in the CMD window. Okay, let me close this additional window first to avoid any confusions. And this is our window. Paste the command, it will convert the recovery image to recovery tar. Likewise, do the same with the VBMeta file as well. And with this, we will have got the tar file for both the recovery and the VBMeta. Let me show you. As you could see, these are the files. So now we have to flash both these files in the Odin tool and get this job done. So for that, boot your phone to the download mode. Regarding this, you could either use the hardware key combination. Let me show you. There are quite a few combination. In case of our device, you have to power it off. 
then press and hold the volume up and volume down keys while holding both the key connect your phone to the pc via usb cable and your phone will then boot to the download mode but for now let's go with the easiest approach of using the adb reboot download command hit enter and your phone should now reboot into download mode which will take just a few seconds and once it's in the download mode you will have to launch the Odin tool to flash the files as well so it's now in the download mode so you may launch the Odin tool by the exe file you will get a prompt click on ok and your phone should now be shown here under the com section and added as well if that's well and good go to the option tab and please uncheck auto reboot this is very important now click on ap and load the recovery file so the recovery tar file and in the user data slot you have to load the vbmeta tar file once you have loaded both the files and uncheck auto reboot click on start it will now flash both of these files onto your phone and will take only a few seconds and the flashing is now complete now you have to boot your phone to this recovery so for that first and foremost press and hold the power and the volume down keys and keep on holding both the key for around 7 to 8 seconds as soon as the phone is about to undergo a restart you will then have to press and hold the power and the volume up keys so let me show you what i mean first and foremost press and hold the power and the volume down keys and hold this key for around 7 seconds until your phone undergoes a restart let me show you and then you will have to let go of both the keys and now press and hold the power and the volume up keys until your phones take you to the let's say warning screen or at least it boots up as soon as the phone boots up you may let go of this key as well so for a few more seconds keep them pressed and now you may let go of the keys and if everything was done at the right time your phone should not reboot to the lineage os recovery let's verify the same but if you haven't pressed the keys at the right time then your phone will boot to the stock os or the stock recovery in which case you will have to once again flash the lineage os recovery file onto your phone so let's wait for a few more seconds and then i will show you the result as well so in our case we are now inside the recovery and we will now start with the flashing process so first and foremost you will have to do a format data which will wipe off all the data from your phone so make sure you have taken a backup beforehand if that's well and good go to factory reset if the touch is not working use the volume keys to highlight factory reset and press the power key to confirm again use the volume key to highlight format data factory reset press the power key to confirm again do the same and you will get the message that data wipe is now complete now use the volume key to highlight the back arrow and press the power key to confirm now go to apply update and choose apply from adb and your phone is now in the side load mode let's verify the same so type in adb devices and verify that you're getting the side load keyword as you could see we are now getting this so you could now start off with the side loading for that type in adb side load rom.zip and hit enter and your phone should now start flashing the lineage os rom file which will take around six to seven minutes so let's just wait for that to complete so guys the flashing is now complete now if you want to flash any other zip file then first do a reboot to recovery you may do so from the advanced option so go there and select reboot to recovery and then do an adb side load of the required zip file on the other hand if you don't want to flash any other zip file once that is done now your last course of action is to do a format data once again just to be on the safer side so again select the factory reset format data format data and that's it once the formatting is complete you may now choose the back arrow and then select the reboot system now and your phone should now reboot to the newly flash os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time that is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time that will not be the case so with that said let's just wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and it might appear in a few more seconds so let's keep a tab on that and then we will set up the rom file and then have a look at the rom features and the usp as well so just give me a few more seconds and then we will at least verify the rom boot animation and as you could see the flashing this signifies that the flashing has been done successfully and it should now boot to the os in a few seconds it's quite fast because it does not have any g apps in built so it will not take that much longer to boot up and as you could see we are now inside the os so let's get started as of now i'm skipping the initial setup process if you want you may connect your phone to the wi-fi link your account and restore the data but for now i'm skipping all that stuff if you want to flash any g apps as well okay just a second in that case you will have to, after flashing the rom file do a reboot to recovery and then you may refer to my guide and from here down, you may download the required gi packages such as the let me show you the light gaps nick gi mind the gaps you may either use mind the gaps or nick gi these are the two most recommended ones and then simply do an adb side load but if you forgot to do the side loading of the gi apps and if you are inside the os it's not a cause of concern simply once again reboot to the recovery 
and then do an ADB side load of the required GI packages. Anyways, moving on, you could see we are now inside the latest Android 15 build of the Lineage OS. This is the revamp settings menu of the Android 15 build, and you have the power menu in the QS price as well. Then the screen recording in one particular app is also there. So using this, if you choose any app from here, then the recording will only take place inside that app. If you make a switch to any other app, then recording will pause and only resume once you are back in that app. This is also an Android 15 feature. Then the new back gestures are also there. Apart from that, the battery information, let me have a look. Battery, battery information page section is also there. Then the new volume panel, let's check that out. And it still has the old Android 14 volume panel. I don't know why, though it's not a major cause of concern. Then the private space, using this you could set hide your apps. First you have to set up a screen lock. I'm using the most easiest one, but it's recommended you choose a stronger one. So let's now check out the private space and you may choose the same screen lock that you have used for the lock screen or choose a new lock. It's highly recommended to choose the new lock, but for the ease of convenience and to speed up the process, I'm using a same lock and we are now done. So you could now tap on it, unlock it and add the required space over here. Moreover, you may even hide the private space from the app drawer using this toggle and you could then re-enable it from the settings from the search bar or the settings menu. Apart from that, you could access the wallpaper and style section and from here, you could change the theme engine from here as you could see. It has quite a lot of themes from here and here. Then you may switch between the light and the dark theme as well. Let's stick with the dark theme only and the default theme engine, which is this one. Then you have the option to add the shortcuts at the left and right of the lock theme, which is these are the ones. Let's check them out as well. Let's say on the left, let's add the camera. On the right, let's add DND mode. And let me now see whether they are up and running or not. So this is the AOD screen, this is the lock screen, and you could see both the options are now there. Moving on, we have the next up is the icons in the status bar. So these are the few icons that you could choose from and implement them right away. After that, we have the font style. Only four, three or four fonts are there. And the font will be applied across the entire UI and UX of the OS. In the home screen, you have the option to enable theme icons. And as you could see, they are now implemented. You may change the app grid size as well. The most is the 6 cross 6, but in most cases, the 5 cross 5 is the one which I usually use. Then the last one is the icon shape. Let's go with the pebble one. And these are the various icon shape. These icon shape will be applied across both the home screen and the app drawer. As you could see, it's implemented both of these places. And apart from that, if we access some of the other menus, let's have a look in the display section. Adaptive brightness corresponding to the brightness value, it will automatically adjust the brightness, then display size and text and minimum refresh rate is 60 Hz. You may force it to keep it at 120, but that will lead to additional battery drainage. So keep that point in mind. Tap to wake on the screen to wake up the device. Tap to sleep. Tap to sleep is working. Tap to wake is also working well and good. So both of these features are there. Advanced display. So I am not quite sure about this feature. It's set to Linux OS by default and I guess that is the best one as of now. Apart from that, let's access the system menu. In the buttons, you may invert the layout of the three button navigation and likewise you may also assign any actions, but this will only or mostly work in case of two or three button navigation. In case of the gesture pill, it's quite hard to access this navigation. Then, okay, see, these are for the edge long swipe action. Let me show you any lo launch camera. So. As you could see, the camera has been launched, but in my case, it used to conflict with the back gesture, so I keep it turned off just to give it a great user experience. Talking about user experience, the phone has hanged, which is, is quite normal when setting up the ROM for the first time. So with that said, let me turn it off. Well, again, it's currently hanged. Let me close it and reopen it. The irony is that I was talking about the UI and it now currently seems to be hanged. So I was under the system section and from here, we're talking about the buttons, power menu, uh, advanced power menu. Okay, that is there as well. Let's keep a tab on that. Restart and you could do a restart to the system recovery and the download mode. Apart from that, these are the other tweaks of the volume control panel as well. Then apart from the button, as you could see, doing a back gesture is opening the camera so I have to turn off this gesture talking about which even if I use the gesture it tends to hang the phone as well 
so it's better to keep it turned off for now i guess the issue might be fixed in the subsequent build since it's an official build the issue will be fixed quite fast okay so let me first turn off this now it's well and good next up in the status bar you may show or hide the clock positioning and change them show seconds show or hide the am pm style the battery style let's say circle as you could see it's now implemented battery percentage next to the icon and it's visible as well then apart from that these are the aosp gestures touch screen gesture single tap show ambient display okay this is something new let's say open the dialer on the touch aod screen i don't know what exactly what they're talking about so let me verify it once again okay the dialer is now open this is was quite fast i wasn't expecting this so you just have to unlock your phone once which is quite obvious and then we'll get the job done but let's keep it to show ambient display or which is the obvious option over here then these are the same aosp just that you get across all the roms apart from that you may install the system update from this section or you may also install the update from the adb side load recovery as well both of them will get the job done and that's just about it from here you may give it the notification access so you will then get the pending notification icons on top of each app icons as well then you may also hide apps from this section and use theme icons in the app drawer as well on the home screen and and the app drawer as you could see it's now implemented which looks quite nice and that's just about it so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps whether the flashing or the features do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching